Hey everyone, welcome to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara from allbrands.com and today you're in for a treat. Do you get frustrated when you may be using the wrong needle and you don't know? Well, join Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles and All Brands today as we go over what needle should I use when sewing. Uh, so today we'll learn about sewing machine needles. We'll have a giveaway at the end. So to be eligible for that, go ahead and comment hashtag all brands in the comments to be eligible. And we'll also have great bundle offers um, that are available for a limited time uh, with packs of needles that are good for different types of sewers. So I hope that you enjoy this and we'll bring in our amazing, wonderful, fantastic special guest, Rhonda Pierce. Like sewing needles, Pierce. I love it. Uh, from Schmetz Needles. And here she is. Hello. Hi, Barbara. Hello, everyone. You know, I think we should have Dooley Needles. <laughs> <laughs> I love these for learning about needles because there's so many important parts. I know. And that's where I'm going to start today. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we have a lot to learn. I do. That's for sure. Well, that's what I'm here for. If um, you're not aware of the importance of the needle, I'm pretty sure you will today. <laughs> so my presentation is in three parts. I'm first going to start with the physical needle because I think when you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps you make an informed decision as to what needle type and size to use. Then I'm going to talk about all those numbers on the Little Smets needle pack. What do they mean? And I'll talk about the color chart. And then I'll talk about specific needles for piecing and quilting, sewing with knits, etc. So, um, yeah, I'm delighted to be here, Barbara. It's been a long time since I've seen you in person. <laughs> I know, me too. So anybody, if you if you see something that you like or if, Schme if Rhonda talks about any Schmetz needles that look interesting to you, you can click shop product in the description of this video. There's a link with all of the products available there. Also, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. I'll save them and we'll answer them live on the show. So. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Lots of questions about needles. So don't be intimidated. Go ahead and just type that in the chat and Barbara will help me monitor any questions so I can get those answered for you. Well, let me just jump right in. I want to talk about the actual physical needle. Yes, my needle is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. It is 11 times the size our regular needle. So let's talk about the parts. Now, mine is on an actual uh, wooden base, but I think even virtually, you can see the top of the needle is a beveled edge. This is referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, yeah, so what, a beveled edge. Stop and think about it. When you go to insert your needle, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So the top of the needle is beveled for easier insertion into your machine. Our home sewing machine, uh, require a flat shank, a flat shank, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area. This is referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope you're, you've noticed that your needles have either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle, which is referred to as the blade of the needle. And Smets, being a German company, actually measures this area here of the needle with the metric system. They'll get a measurement like 0 0.70, 0 0.80, etc. cetera. They take that measurement times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. So sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera, are based on an actual measurement of our physical needle. So now, it's easier to remember that a size 90 needle is larger than a size 70 needle. Again, the size is based on the actual measurement of the blade. On the front of the needle, how many of you have noticed um, the groove? You can actually feel and see the groove on your little two inch needle. But what's the purpose of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it's not flip-flopping back and forth. 
Your thread when you're sewing should move evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip and these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of your needle, above the eye, we have this little indentation. This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to create the stitch. So that this is referred to as the scarf of the needle. So Barbara, if you would um, start my slides, that would be fantastic. And here's a really great uh, image of the parts of the needle. You've got your butt, the shank, the shoulder, the blade, the groove, the point, the tip. And I haven't mentioned the eye yet. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to your Smets needle. Your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch in the metallic, you can see that the eye is elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have um, threads that are breaking or shredding, what are you going to do? Well, you, need to, you may need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a little sewing situation we sometimes encounter. Threads that break and shred, what are you going to do? Yeah, you need to replace the needle. <laughs> okay, so next, let's talk about the Smets color chart. Um, your needles, as of 2014, have either one or two bands of color. So I just want to make sure you're familiar with how to read the color chart. So on the left-hand side, the chart is the column is labeled needle type. So all the different Smets needle types are listed and many are assigned a color. On the right-hand side of this um, sample, we see the column is labeled needle size. So each needle size is assigned a color. Now look at the needle between the two columns. The top color band identifies your needle uh, type and the lower color band identifies your needle size. So on this sample here, the top color band is yellow. So what kind of needle is this? Well, we look off to the left and we find yellow is a stretch needle. Back to our needle and that lower color band, we look off to the right under needle size and we find pink is a size 7511. So this sample here is a stretch size 7511. Now just to walk you through a couple other examples, my favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, quilting is a Microtex size 8012. So what would the two uh, color bands be? Well for Microtex, we look off to the left and we find Microtex is purple. And for size 8012, we look off to the right under needle size and we find um, 8012 is orange. So Microtex size 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be what needle type and size would I have if I have two bands of orange? Two bands of orange. Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find orange is a jersey needle. And off to the right under needle size, orange is still size 8012. So two bands of orange is a jersey size 8012 needle. Now, there's one more thing I need to point out about the Smets color chart. And that has to do with the very first needle listed under needle type. And that's the universal needle, the most popular needle type. But as you can see, universal, 
There's no color assigned. In fact, the box is X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles have only one band of color, and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal 8012, well, you have just a single band of orange. If it's a universal um, uh, size 9014, you have just a single band of blue. So I hope this color chart helps you identify your Smets needles, especially after you've taken them out of your package. Lots of information there. All right, so next let's look at the little Smets needle pack because I want to make sure you understand what all those numbers are and what they mean. So I think most everyone recognizes needle size or sizes on this sample here. Currently, needle sizes are at the bottom of your needle pack. So on this sample here, we have assorted needle sizes. We have sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. But how many of you have looked above the needle size and wondered, what the heck does 13705H mean? <laughs> 13705H. <laughs> well, think of that is the needle system. Think of it as a model number. 13705 means that the needle has a flat shank. And the H translates from a German word that means scarf. Needle system 13705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf that we can use in almost 99% of all of our home sewing machines. So think of the needle system as a model number. Don't be intimidated by it, but you do need to know that number. Above the needle system, you find um, the needle type spelled out. So these are universal needles. You've got the Smets name above that. And above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So we already learned that universal needles have only one band of color to identify your needle size. So on this sample here, the two needles on the left-hand side have single bands of green. Green for size 7010. The next two needles to the right have orange bands for size 8012. And the needle to the far right has that single blue band for size 9014. So lots of information here. But let's look at one more um, example of a needle pack. Again, at the bottom of the pack currently is the needle size. So this, these are size 9014. Above that is the needle system 13705H. But look a little bit closer because on this sample here, there's an additional letter. On this sample, it's a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other samples um, or needle packs, you might find a Q for quilting or M for micro tax or J for jeans, etc. So lots of information on your needle system line. Above that is the, the um, needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. Above that, even today, sometimes you'll still see um, the German word for needle. And above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on each of these needles, the top color band is red, red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue for size 9014. So keep this chart um, uh, or keep this information um, handy. Um, there's no need to be mystified by all of those numbers and letters, but I hope that um, helps elevate your confidence and um, all those, those numbers and letters on your little Smets needle pack. Okay, so Barbara, if you come back to me, I want to talk a little bit about um, the most popular needle. And what do you think that is, the most popular needle type? What do you think, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> Universal is the most popular needle type. I Why? thought it was a trick question. <laughs> no, no, not a trick. We're talking needles here. There are no tricks. <laughs> Universal has a slightly rounded point. It works beautifully with both woven and with knit fabrics. 
The universal needle also is available in the widest range of sizes from the smallest needle 60 slash 8 all the way up to a size 125. Um, the universal needle is also available in twin and triple needles too. Now, I always like to ask, what do you think the most popular needle size is for universal? And I would guess that you probably already know that universal size 8012 is the most popular needle type and size, followed by universal size 9014. So no matter what kind of sewing, piecing, quilting you do, I always suggest that you have universal 8012 and universal ni size 9014 in your stash, at least for backup. <laughs> So I want to talk about popular needles for piecing and for quilting. And there's five popular needle types. And this information I've received not only from um, surveys from previous shows and online surveys, but um, also our sales reports reflect this information too. So uh, for piecing and quilting, five needle types popular, universal, Definitely popular for piecing and quilting. Lots of famous quilters use universal for both piecing and for quilting. But let's look at the four other needle types. And I'm not presenting these in any specific order. We've got the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. Does that surprise you? Well, how many of you like to make denim quilts or jeans quilts? Or maybe you like to make flannel quilts. Or maybe you like to make those heavy duty raggy quilts. So what's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade so that when the needle passes through your heavier or denser fabrics, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle, so you get a cleaner stitch. So the jeans needle has that reinforced blade, wonderful for um, denim quilts, um, jeans quilts, those flannel quilts, and those heavy-duty raggy quilts. Okay, another popular needle type for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. Why? Well, we already learned that the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So yes, top stitch is popular for piecing and quilting because there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. Another needle popular for piecing and quilting, well, just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. This needle was specifically engineered for piecing and for quilting. It has a special taper, a special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting, and it has a slightly rounded point. So this needle comes in two sizes. You probably use the smaller size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and quilting. Maybe it's a needle that you use. And that is the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle. So when your books and patterns say use a sharp needle, well, they're referring to a Smets Microtex needle. So what's so special about this needle? The Microtex needle has a very slim acute point. Very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get very precise stitches. And because this is a very slim acute point, guess what? The Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace your Microtex more frequently than any other needle type. The other thing I want to mention about the Microtex needle is how many of you like to sew, piece, or quilt uh, with batik fabrics. Even if you pre-wash your batik fabric, sometimes they can still be tightly woven and still have dye residue. So the Microtex can just penetrate through that batik fabric beautifully. So the Microtex, generically known as a sharp needle. So if you're taking notes here today, 
five needle types popular for piecing and for quilting. Let me just quickly go through these. We've got the workhorse of all needle types, the universal needle. We've got the jeans needle, which has that reinforced blade. We have the top stitch needle with that um, elongated eye. The quilting needle, specially designed for piecing and for quilting, and the microtex, also known as a sharp needle. Now, all of these needles you can buy from um, all brands, a single card, or as a special here today, they have these all bundled up for you. So there'd be um, this is the piecing and quilting collection, and it includes one of each of these needles, along with a handy little luggage tag with the Smets color chart. And to tell you the truth, I actually travel with my color chart on my luggage. And I've met all kinds of sewing friends just in the waiting area at airports. <laughs> and um, the bundle from All Brands also comes with the ABC Pocket Guide, everything you need to know about the um, Pocket Guide. So these, um, the link will be up there shortly um, uh, so that you can buy these direct from All Brands. Okay, so next let's move on to sewing with knits. If you haven't sewn with knits in a while, I encourage you to do so. The knits are beautiful. Then when I learned to sew, double polyester was popular. <laughs> and knits have come a long way since then. But part of the success of sewing with knits is using the appropriate needle. And yes, the needle really makes a huge difference when you're sewing with knits. So there are two needles you must have when you're sewing with knits. And the first is a jersey needle. The generic name for a jersey needle is a ballpoint needle. The jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle that you need in your stash when sewing with knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint, just like that jersey needle. But the stretch needle has a smaller eye and a deeper um, scarf. So now the stretch needle is going to react a little bit differently than your jersey needle when working with knits. So if you're working with knits, well, how do you know? You should have both of these needle types in your stash, but how do you know? Do you use a stretch or a jersey needle? Well, there is a rule of thumb and it works about 80% of the time. If your knit fabric has light crust, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the, um, the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey needle. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. So be prepared with both jersey and stretch. Again, you can find these needles as single cards at allbrands.com or guess what? We have these bundled up for you. Um, the jersey has assorted sizes and the stretch, we've got sizes 75, we've got the, um, the stretch size, um, gosh, stretch 7511 and the 9014. So again, these are already bundled up. So if you're just venturing into knits, uh, try the sewing with knits bundle with the luggage tag and the handy little um, ABC pocket guide. So uh, keep those in mind. Now, I have another special collection of needles that I want to bring to your attention. These were, um, these were introduced right before the pandemic. So if you are not familiar with these needles, well, guess what? That's why I'm here today, to keep you informed. <laughs> these are the super um, nonstick needles, super nonstick universal needle. And I think even virtually, you can see that these needles are a different color. Um, they're kind of a gunmetal color or charcoal gray, and that's the anti-adhesive coating. But there's a couple other features that I want to point out about these special needles. They have a reinforced blade, so there's less needle deflection and an extra large eye. So great features to the super nonstick. When are you going to use them? Well, how many of you like to do machine embroidery or machine applique? Well, the super nonstick is a great needle choice because when you're doing either of those techniques, oftentimes you're working with a stabilizer, right? 
And that stabilizer has a tendency to get warm. And then the adhesive from the stabilizer has a tendency to get warm and um, gum up your needle. So the nonstick needle will resist the adhesives from sticking to your needle. Maybe you like to make multimedia quilts where you're working with foils and papers and um, fusibles, et cetera. This is a great needle choice to use. If you like to sew with oil cloth or splash fabric, this is a great needle choice. Or how many of you like to sew on vinyl? And what happens when you're sewing on vinyl? The vinyl gets warm and then it has a tendency to hug your needle. And then you can't see where you're sewing. <laughs> so the super nonstick will uh, resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. And then one other application for the super nonstick is um, when you're working with Velcro or hoop and loop tape. You know, it's always a kind of an odd fabrication. It's sticky on one side, fuzzy on another, and kind of crispy in between. So the super nonstick can just uh, stitch through those layers beautifully. So super nonstick needles. These needles come in four sizes, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And um, yes, you can buy the single sizes at All Brands, or I've got these already bundled up over at All Brands, a pack of each size with the luggage tag and the um, uh, ABC pocket guide. So you'll want to um, check check those out. So again, super nonstick, anytime you're working with a sticky stabilizer, fusible, spray adhesive, um, et cetera. One other category of needles I want to bring to your attention, especially for those of you who um, enjoy machine embroidery, or maybe you're just um, starting with machine embroidery, we've got the embroidery bundle. So this is your regular embroidery needle. It has that extra large eye. The embroidery needle also comes in a titanium finish. Titanium helps to keep the needle cool um, so you can stitch longer. And then the embroidery package also includes a pack of the um, super nonstick needles. So again, these you are available as single cards or All Brands has them already bundled up uh, with the luggage tag and the ABC pocket guide. And those links will be um, available um, soon. Oh my goodness, we have just covered a lot of needles. And you know what? I'm just now clicking. I was on private chat, so I wasn't seeing any comments. <laughs> well, I'm saving all the questions. So don't worry. We'll, I'm saving them and we'll get to those at the end. Okay. But, wow, I love how Schmitz makes it so easy. Not only if the needle gets out of the pack, we can identify it by the color coding on it. There is the color chart available. There's the, um, we haven't even talked about the app yet. That's right. Uh, the luggage tag in these sets. And all of these sets are just a great bundle to get. And if you click the link in the description of this video, I think you'll be very surprised at the price points there. Um, like in the $20, $30 range for each pack. So um, great Fantastic. deal. Well, the other thing I want to say about the, um, these bundles is, you know, they're like sampler packs. You know, it's not like um, fabrics from years ago where we just had a couple of uh, fabric manufacturers and you knew what to expect and you knew what needle to use. But now we have a plethora of different types of fabrics from different companies. And so even though you might like Microtech size 8012 is my favorite needle when I'm piecing and quilting, every once in a while there'll be a, a fabric with a different finish or a different weight. So I might have to size down to a Microtech size um, 7010 or maybe even even use a different needle type. So, you know, you don't want to be afraid to change out your needle size or even um, the needle type. So uh, keep that in mind. Well, Barbara, let before we go into any questions, let's just scoot along and try to get through the next few slides. Because I like to ask, what do you think the most popular question is? And I'm pretty sure you've asked it and everyone in your audience has asked it. And that is, how long does a needle last? <laughs> well, here's the easy answer. They do not last forever. 
Your needles should never, ever look like these. These are really super nasty looking needles. That needle on the left hand side looks like it has twin mountain peaks. That needle on the far right looks like a cutting blade. So what are these needles going to do to your fabric? Yeah, they're just going to eat up your fabric and cause problems. So what do you need to do? Change your needle. <laughs> Yeah, changing out the needle. It's something very simple that you can do yourself even at two o'clock in the morning. You should have a stash. You do not need to um, take your machine in for the technician to change the needle. So do that yourself. This is my favorite slide in the entire presentation because this is a needle that's been used and abused. But looking at it in that first frame on the left-hand side, it looks sharp to our naked eye, right? But as we magnify it increasingly, as we move to the right-hand side, you can see how really dull this needle is. Look at that super uh, lip right there on the point. And look at all those burrs and striations. So what is this needle going to do to your, your precious fabrics? Yeah, it's just going to eat up your fabrics. So you really do need to change out um, the needle. Yeah, needles get dull with use. So Barbara, if you come back to me, how long does a needle last? I have no idea. It could be uh, three seconds if you hit a pin right away. And I know when you hit a pin, you might think, oh, my goodness, I just bent the needle. And it's possible that you did. But I guarantee if you just hit a pin, what you've done is you've just compromised the point and the tip. So you need to just change out that needle. Maybe you can sew um, for 20 hours. Maybe you're not a very aggressive sewer and it's a finer project. So three seconds, 20 hours. Yeah, that's quite the spread. I know people like to uh, average it out to changing the needle every six to eight hours. But what I would prefer that you do is you actually reframe that question to while you're sewing, what are the clues to changing the needle? So let's just walk through those clues um, really quickly. We kind of touched upon one clue already, and that's when your threads are shredding and, and breaking. What does that mean? Well, if you're not changing your, need your, your uh, needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> What's a groove in the eye of the needle going to do? Shred and break your thread. So what are you going to do? Change the needle. Simple to do. What's happening to your fabrics? Are your fabrics um, puckering? Are they snagging? Or in a really bad case, when the needle hits your fabric, it's actually tucking the fabric into your throat plate. Well, hello, that's a clue. Those are clues that you need to change out your needle. And what about your stitch quality? Um, are your stitches skipping? Are your seams uneven? Or maybe you're sitting at your machine and you go, well, you know, Rhonda, I'm sewing in a straight line. How come my stitches look kind of the wiggly squiggly? Well, guess what? Your needle is dull. What's the solution? Just change out the needle. And then there's one other clue to changing the needle. Hopefully, when you're sewing, you're in that bubble and your machine is hum, hum, humming along, right? And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. What is that? Hey, it's your needle. And it's saying, hey, I've been working hard here. Change me. If you ignore that clicking sound, now what happens? It graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. It's yelling at you. Hey, change me. I've done more than my fair share of stitches. Change me. If you ignore the, cl the clicking and the popping, now what's happening? You're hearing that clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> so what do you need to do? Just change out the needle. So today I'm not here just to sell you more needles, but let's stop and think about it. I want you to have a quality sewing experience. So you've spent a lot of money on your machine or your machines, right? Whether it's $100 or thousands of dollars, it's a big investment. You spent a lot of money curating your fabric stash or stashes. You've spent a lot of money on your beautiful threads. 
You've spent a lot of money on your books, patterns, classes, uh, retreats, etc. And let's not forget your time. Your time is an investment too. Your time, whether it's minutes or hour upon hour, that's an investment. So let's complete that investment cycle right down to the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your machine which also happens to be the least expensive part to your sewing project and to your machine, the Smets needle. So just change out that, that needle. <laughs> Rhonda, L. Faber says, bang, bang, boom. Just change the needle. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and, and seriously, though, Rhonda, a lot of times when we get repairs in, uh, because we do offer repairs in all of our seven retail store locations, um, there's burrs on the hook because of bent needles. So not changing your needle could send it to the repair shop sooner which, than it needs to be. Which is not a two or five dollar repair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So okay. So you know what? I have just a couple more slides. So let's go through those and then I can answer any um uh questions. Okay. So let's just start. Okay, so we have covered a lot of information here today. And there's a lot of free information for you um, by going to smetsneedles.com. One of the things that's free is a free Smets app. And you can find that one of two ways. This is the um, header of our website and you can scroll down and you'll find this screen here. What needle am I? And then for all your needle needs, you can click the grace block there um, for the free app. And I'll talk about that free app um, a little bit shortly. The other way that you can get to the app is um, along the header, it says Smets needles, home sewing needles, industrial needles, et cetera, and then resources right above that quilting needle with the top uh, color band of green. So click resources, and then this is your drop down. And you can see the Smets ABC pocket guide, and you can print that out yourself. It's not going to be as pretty or as, as cute as the one you get with the bundles that you can get from all brands. You can also print out the Smets color chart, and you can also um, download the free app. Um, it says uh, Smets free web app. So you, the link is right, right there. What's in the free app? Well, all the images that I've shown you here today that are um, also in the ABC Pocket Guide are in the free app. One of the things I really like about the app is there's almost a hundred different fabrics that are listed with needle type and size recommendations. So one of the things I was adamant about was including cork and bamboo. So those are now in the list. Um, there's your Smets color chart. And um, there's also what's new is we've included some popular thread brands and they're linked directly to the pages for specific types um, of, of, of thread for that manufacturer that also gives you the needle recommendation. So uh, we tried to make it really super easy for you. So my name is Rhonda Pierce. I represent Smets Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America. I do have a personal blog, SewMoreStitches.com. I'm not selling anything there, but I do uh, document my sewing projects. And now that I'm starting to travel again, I will have pictures. And um, I've been a little remiss the last couple of weeks. I haven't really recovered from my trip in Las Vegas where I was with um, sewing machine dealers. So I still have some more pictures to uh, provide there, but um, um, I will have pictures next week from Original Sewing and Quilt Expo when I see Barbara in the All Brands booth. And I'll oh be there God. to give two lectures. So <laughs> I'm so excited. So if you guys haven't heard yet, um, next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there's going to be a huge uh, quilting expo in New Orleans, and it's called the Original Sewing and Quilt Expo. It's the first time they've ever come to Louisiana, so let's show some support um, so that we can get more local sewing and quilting uh, shows in our area. All brands will be there representing Brother, 
Bernina, Juki, and the Grace Company will have Make It Take It projects in each booth. Um, there's going to be classes that still have openings, so you can hop on over to their website and sign up for hopefully Rhonda's class because it's going to be very uh, cool. We'll have these packs that we're talking about at the show, um, so you can just pick it up there um, as well. So don't miss out on that. Awesome show. Yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to um, coming to New Orleans. It's been a long time since I've been there, and I do love the original Sewing and Quilt Expo. So my class is on Friday, May 5th at 4 o'clock and Saturday morning at 1030. So that's next Friday and next Saturday. Um, so I would love to, to meet your customers, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have a quilt show in the spring um, in Louisiana. I'm just smitten. So I, I hope that um, everyone comes, uh, represents, so that we can have it every, I think every other year is what they, they do. But they're huge. They tour all across the country. So we're so excited. Okay, now, you know, there's something I want, before I forget, um, you know, one thing I didn't mention was, slightly used needles that are still sewing worthy. I mean, in the real world, we kind of juggle projects sometimes, right? You might be working on a quilt project and then go, oh yeah, I need to make a little t-shirt for a kiddo. So, and that original needle is still sewing worthy. What do you do with it? And we've got the um, Grab It My Pad Needle Organizer. And I know All Brand sells this. I updated this last year with all the different Smets needle types. So this is a great way to organize your slightly used needles by needle type. And there's a cell for all of the different needle sizes. So I keep one right next to my sewing machine. So um, it's quite handy. The MyPad also comes with a little flower head pin. So if you've got some older Smets needles that are um, do not have the color coding, once you take that needle out of the package and you've put it in your machine, just slide this flower head pin right into the appropriate needle type and size. So your needles just slide in really um, quite, quite easily. So keep that in mind. And since I'm talking about Grab It Sewing Tool products, I'll also just mention, I think many of you um, already have the Grab It Magnetic Pin Cushions. The Limoncello Yellow is my favorite color, and I know All Brands has um, a variety of colors um, uh, in their shop. So um, one of the other products from the Grab It um, Sewing Tool line is the Bobbin Savers. And this is the Bobbin Saver Square which holds about, oh, 60 some bobbins. They can be plastic or metal, empty or full. And this now is available in the blue. So um, you can keep your bobbins organized, you know, especially if a little cat comes by or a kid comes by and <laughs> decides to use this as a Frisbee, your bobbins will stay put. And it's also available in the jumbo version. So if you've got a machine that requires the jumbo version, you can see that these channels are deeper and wider than the original Bob and Saver Square. So all brands has, um, has these um, also. So the Ooh. jumbo, uh, Rhonda, is for the Bernina, right? And then the yes. other one for many of the Bernina. The uh, Berninas use a lot of the jumbo bobbins. And I think there's some other machine brands out there that also use the jumbo. But for your regular, so you have to know um, your bobbin. It will actually say jumbo bobbin. <laughs> and that's what this is about. So your jumbo bobbins will not fit in the regular bobbin saver square. <laughs> Awesome. Well, before we get to questions, because I have 25 saved, so maybe we'll do a lightning round. Okay. I just want to go over again the different packs that are available and remind everybody that we do have a giveaway at the end of this video. So if you haven't yet, comment hashtag all brands to be entered to win a $25 uh, e gift card. Maybe you can use it on these amazing packs that we're going to talk about. So there's four or five different ones available. Oh, okay. So okay. we've got um, piecing and quilting. So um, you've got the universal jeans, top stitch quilting and microtech. So, you know, 
Um, it's a great sampler pack, so you can try a variety of different um, needles. We've got the sewing with knits with both jersey and stretch needles. We've got the super nonstick, so you get a one pack of each size. That size is 70, 80, 90, and 100. So these needles are fantastic when you're doing machine embroidery, machine applique. Uh, maybe you're sewing on vinyl or doing multimedia quilting or working with Velcro, or anytime you're working with um, a spray adhesive. And then we've got the machine embroidery um, bundle, three packs. You've got the super nonstick, the titanium, and also the regular embroidery needles. And each of these bundles comes with, hello, the handy little luggage tag with the color chart that everybody uh, loves and the ABC pocket guide. So let me just walk you through this pocket guide really quick. Um, what's new to this is now I've got all the different needle points that are available for our home sewing machines. And then under each point, uh, it tells you what needle type has that specific um, needle point. Here, this is one of the most important things in the um, brochure needle eye so that you don't have to remember that the top stitch in metallic have that elongated eye and the embroidery has that enlarged eye. Oh, but yes. Page seven is the most important part page in this brochure because clues to change the needle. <laughs> then we um, photographed all the different needle types. We tell you what the special features are, the sizes, the color, um, et cetera. At the back, we have the alphabetical listing of um, fabrics and uh, needle type and size recommendations. So lots of really valuable information here. It's more than just a promotional, but I tried to make it very user-friendly um, so that you can um, get your information fast and, and easy. Oh, and Barbara, you know what? There's one more thing. We talked about this a little bit before. If you know uh, your favorite needle type and size, I'm so pleased because all brands sells the bulk needles. So what are bulk needles? There's 100 loose needles in here. There's no packaging. These are just like um, your regular needles. I'll show you the Microtex, but it's a single needle type and size. So for me, Microtex size 80, 12, guess what? I've got them by the, the bulk package. So All Brands is one of the few that carries the, um, the bulk packaging. So um, you'll never be short of needles. <laughs> <laughs> At two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> have them all together. And um, like say you're doing embroidery, your price per needle to change is less when you buy them in the bulk pack. So that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, there's Clovis. I see Clovis is here. I know Clovis from in fact I've met Clovis. <laughs> You're getting a lot of love and a lot of questions. Okay, so, well, you feed me the questions, Barbara. All right. I'm just going to go from top to bottom in no specific order, um, just from who asked first. Okay, here we go. Anne Philbeck asked in the beginning, she said, I'm sewing with velour with interfacing on it as we speak. I'm using my walking foot. What needle should I use? Okay, so Barbara... Uh, you want to download the app or go to the ABC Pocket Guide and you're going to type in or look for Velour. So that's what I'm doing right here in the little uh, ABC Pocket Guide in Velour that's yeah. universal. <laughs> if it's um, a Velour knit or jersey, you're going to use the stretch. But I might also add, if you're working with a sticky stabilizer, that that uh, super non-stick would be um, an option for you, too. Perfect. All right. Pam says, can you review what needle to use on other medium than fabric? So some of us have been embroidering on balsa wood uh, recently. Okay. Work, et cetera. <laughs> okay. So I don't think balsam wood is in um, in the book or in the app, but um, felt. 
So um, Microtax is an option for cork and pleather um, along with the super nonstick. So um, you will find in here cork and um, the faux leather. So that would be uh, super nonstick or Microtax. For screen, I would probably use a, a super nonstick needle just because it's got that uh, reinforced blade. A jeans needle would be possible too. For wood, um, well, wow. my it's embroidery on wood. We've been embroidery. embroidery. Oh, okay. So you know what? I would try that super nonstick needle because it's got that um, that reinforced blade and a slightly rounded point. So you're going to have to uh, replace that needle quite frequently. You could try a micro tax needle, um, depending on how thick or thin that uh, wood is. So I think there's e experimentation that's involved <laughs> yeah. um, with that. So, but good question. Yeah. Okay. Rochelle asks, what size needle should I use with vinyl or cork? You know, it all depends on the weight. So let me give you my uh, rule of thumb on needle size. If I'm using a... Um, Oh, a 40 weight thread um, and just a regular, a regular fabric, whether it was knit or um, a woven, I would use a size 8012 needle. Now, if I'm using a finer uh, thread, I know that I need to use a, a smaller needle. So I'll go down a needle size or two to maybe um, a size 7010 or um smaller. One of the things I noticed during the pandemic was micro threads became very popular. So with micro threads, you want to use the smallest needle possible from a size 70, 10, maybe a size 65, or even a size 60. So sometimes you just have to um, experiment. So again, my uh, benchmark for uh, needle size is with a 40 weight thread, I generally use a size 80, 12 needle. And sometimes, you know, you just have to experiment. It's a dance. It's a dance between your fabric, your thread. Sometimes our machines have personalities um, and your technique. So what works for you today, you know, may you might have to adjust for your next project. So don't be afraid to change. <laughs> All right, so Anne says, so we shouldn't use round needles? Um, Anne, so a round needle, are you talking about a round shank? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there. 99% um, of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank, a flat shank. But I know that there are some home sewing machine specific models that will use um, a round shank. So you really need to be familiar with your machine. What I would suggest that you do is if you don't have your owner's manual that you Google your specific machine make and model and then you're going to have to dig in the owner's manual. They always hide that information for the needle system used by um, your, your machine. So, um, um, yeah, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. But you know what? Google makes it so easy. Yeah, yeah. So this it'll be the system. <laughs> okay, cool. Yes. Joan Ledbetter says, how do I tell the difference between ELX705 and that's the, is that the embroidery? ELX705 is the, um, the uh, serger needle. Oh, is the serger needle. So what's special about ELX705 is that it has not just one groove, but it has um, a second groove on the backside of the needle. And for some of our serger um, stitches, you need that second groove um, for your um, for your stitches. And I just want to look something up real quick. So oh, let me look at a different chart. I want to make sure I get this right. ELX 705. Oh, I, oh, I thought I had everything handy. And I'm sure I do. Sort of. <laughs> so, oh, here we go. ELX 705. What I want to just look up is SUK is um, a medium ballpoint. 
PLX705. And there's also um, um, a light ballpoint. So um, ELX705 is your, oh gosh, you know what? I might have to get back to you because I want to make sure I answer that right. We can answer okay. comments after if you don't have that. Yeah, um, um, SUK is a medium ballpoint, is a medium ballpoint. So your regular ELX 705, I just want to make sure I get this right, is, um, <laughs> is, I'll follow up with you later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can respond in the chat. Uh, okay, here's one from Rebecca. Are the super nonstick needles sharp like Microtex? No, no, they are not. So your ELX 70 or your um, super nonstick has a, I'm just going to look it up to be sure, a slightly, Microtex has that very slim acute point. And it's the only home sewing machine needle that has that very slim acute point. The super universal nonstick needle has the slightly rounded point. So they're two different points. So with that slightly rounded point, that would be the same point as a universal needle. So you can work with a lot of different fabrics with that um, uh, super nonstick. Here's a crazy question, and I think I know the answer, but here we go. What needles <laughs> did you use to sew sequins? <laughs> Okay, and I'll tell you what, we do have sequins in the um, really? in the app. And we've, we've got two answers for that. It's going to depend. Is it like a jersey sequin fa fabric or is it a woven? So if it's um, a knit, you're going to use a stretch. Stretch size 7511 or a 9014. If it's a woven, you'll probably use a Microtex needle. And that could be anywhere from a size 70 to a larger size 9014. Again, depending on the weight of your fabric. So for sequins, yeah, is it a knit or is it a woven? If it's a knit, you'll use a stretch. If it's um, uh, just a regular woven, you can use the um, the the Microtex. I love that. I've seen on tutorials where they um, they take out the line of sequence on the seam so that it doesn't bulk up. Right. And it's right on the edge. And I do that sometimes, depending on the project. If it's kind of a... Um, uh, if it's an intricate project, I will remove the sequence from the seam line. But if it's something that's kind of more disposable, oh, yeah, I'll just stitch right through the sequence and I'll have to change my needle quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, here's one from Roxanne. When embroidering, how often should you change your needle? These yeah, you know. I have no idea. Yeah, it depends. So what you're going to do is you want to watch um, and listen for your stitch quality because you'll notice that your, your stitches will start to skip or your, your stitches are kind of uneven or your thread is starting to, um, to shred. Those are all clues that you need to, to change the needle. When you're doing machine embroidery, generally that's at a high speed, right? More than just regular sewing. So you're going to have to change your needle more frequently. Could it be six to eight hours? It's possible. It could be more frequently than that. So be aware of the clues to change the needle. There's a special needle system for multi-needle embroidery machines by Schmitz, correct? Um, I can't remember the needle system name, but you can get it in a pack of 100. Right. And, so and those, those would be considered industrial needles. So you really need to know the, um, the needle system. And let me just 
talk a little bit about um, other needle systems, especially if you've got a long arm machine or maybe a quasi embroidery or a big embroidery machine. Yeah, sometimes those machines require a different needle system and they are not uh, interchangeable like our home sewing machine needles. You must know what needle system to use and that requires you talking to all brands or um, going online and finding out looking at your owner's manual. That information is always kind of hidden in the owner's manual, but you have to, you have to know. Um, popular needle systems for long arms would be like 134R, 135X17, 135X5, 206X13. Um, there's, yeah, those are the five primary needle systems for long arms and um, they're not interchangeable. So, I, you got to know. <laughs> I love having the master here because we got some crazy questions. What needle would you use for invisible thread? Yeah, it kind of depends on your brand and um, and the size. Again, um, you probably want a larger eye for your invisible thread. So if you could use um, a top stitch or embroidery, use the smallest size as, as possible. Cool. And if you're... If you're using um, um, a stabilizer or some uh, sticky stabilizer, try that super nonstick. Yeah, again, oh, cool. that, a larger eye, but in a smaller size. There's your answer, Betty. Cool. All right. And then we did have a comment uh, from Paula. She says, I used metallic thread yesterday with the right needle and I didn't have a single problem. Thank Yay. You. <laughs> Well, let me give you a little trivia, some inside information. Like when you're sewing with those really finicky um, uh, metallic threads, generally you want to use a metallic needle or a top stitch needle. And guess what? Those needles are the same. They're very same needle, just two different names. So if you are sewing with metallic threads and you don't have a metallic, but you've got a top stitch thread or needle, use it because it's the very same needle, just two different names. Insider secret. Yep. <laughs> well, not so secret anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh my gosh. Rhonda always has the best information. My favorite Rhonda tip ever is hanging your wall <laughs> using used sewing machine needles. It changed my decorating. Oh. Life. Every quilt can hang perfectly with a sewing machine needle. Yes, yes. So I don't throw my um, Smets needles away, my used ones. In fact, even this quilt that's hanging behind me, and I'm here in our conference room here at work, um, and I've got Smets needles um, in the wall. <laughs> but here's what I've learned over the years. Instead of just uh, putting the needle directly through the fabric, and there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've uh, there are seven needles that hang this quilt that I think is almost 80 inches wide. What I do is I use those black uh, paper clips, you know, the little paper clips that have the little silver wing on the front and the back. So I clip those to my quilt. And then I flip up the back uh, clip and I hang that on the needle. So now I can easily take this down without damaging the, the fabrics. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Here's a question from Carolyn. Do my needles expire? I recently found a package that are 15 years old. Oh, fantastic. Use them. If they were not exposed to water or dust, um, then use them. They're uh, German steel. They don't deteriorate unless, um, you know, they were just loose in a drawer or not taken care of. But yeah, use them. Here's one, just a comment from Paula. I find I use my Microtex for almost everything. I change my needle after every project or every eight hours or so. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you, Paula. Thanks for being a Smets fan. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a funny one. And then we're going to do our giveaway. Um, um, and, and one more question before the giveaway. Uh, but she said, I think you need to use that prop needle from the balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, if you can find the machine that this will fit in, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
I love it. And uh, we had a few questions. Just let's remind everybody how they can get the the chart. Somebody's wanting to print it out and put it on their wall. Maybe you can make posters. Wrong. Yeah. So yeah. you can go to um, smetsneedles.com and go under resources and you'll see a picture of it and you can go ahead and print it out on eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, you could go to all brands. Um, you know, when you get your, your bundles, this little handy guide comes with it and the ABC or the, um, the color chart is, is in there along with the color chart on the, uh, the bundle. Uh, yeah. Luggage. Yeah, keep it simple, just get the bundle and then you get all the instruction with it. We have free shipping and it's an awesome price on it. Well, you know, the bundles are great for yourself as a sampler, but if you need a gift uh, for a sewing friend, this this is really easy and fun. So uh, keep that in mind too. <laughs> awesome. Well, are you ready to do a giveaway? Absolutely. All right, here we go. And I'm going to draw a name. Let's see who's the lucky one today that's going to win a $25 allbrands.com e-gift card. Jennifer! <laughs> Yay! Hey, Jennifer! Hey, Jennifer! So just please um, email me at events at allbrands.com your name, uh, phone number, address, and... I will get you over that code that you can use on our website, allbrands.com. Uh, I'm okay. so excited. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I can't wait to see you next week. I know. I know. Well, Barbara, you know, I adore you. I love all brands and the entire all brand family. And I'm so happy to see you all next week. So again, uh, if you're going to be in New Orleans next week, uh, come on by to the original sewing and quilt expo. I would love to meet you. And of course, I would love for you to sign up for my class. Or if you've got friends that couldn't be here today, have them sign up for my class. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, until next time, we won't have a show next Thursday because we'll be at the show running four different booths. But we'll be back the following week with a part two from uh, Laura Star Irons. Have you heard of Oh, shows? I love the Laura Star Irons. Yes. Nice, cool um, mist. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great product. And they'll be with us at OSQE as well. So oh, Okay, fantastic. All right. Well, we'll see you uh, in two Thursdays from now. And y'all have a, a great day. I don't know why I'm <laughs> so Bye, everybody. So smart. Bye. <laughs>